good afternoon everyone we're getting started in just a couple of seconds uh, yeah i can see some participants coming in sorry for the couple of minutes uh, delay i've kept the anonymous link on the screen the qr code on the bottom right you can still keep asking uh, more questions i'm happy to see that i've got feedback uh, that there are a number of questions being answered and uh, i did have some follow up questions as well so people are listening people are getting value seriously happy about that all right let's get started looking at the time Good afternoon, everyone. If you are in the UK or nearby time zones, good time of the day, wherever you are. Hope you are feeling well. And thanks for making the time to join this webinar on mindly well-being. Uh, we primarily talk about practical result-based tips on talking about mental health. And before it becomes mental, it always starts emotional, or most of it starts emotional. And this is where the highest amount of prevention can be done. And this is where you can take some preventive steps before things go worse as well. So we talk about that in the session. As you can see on the screen, we have a link where you can ask questions anonymously. And uh, today we have got about just about over 11 questions which were relevant and of the same theme. And they are built up on uh, some of the questions that we got last time as well. So you will see some buildup of topics uh, from the last webinar. All the recordings are available on YouTube. They are categorized by topics. So in case there are certain specific uh, topics that you are interested in, have a look. If you can't find it, ask a question and I'll cover it next time. Okay, so um, my name is Jeev Sahu. Sahu like Yahoo. Um, I don't introduce myself as a psychologist first what i do is i introduce myself as a human being as a dad brother son as an employee manager investor and so forth i have been there in all these places i have um, made friends lost friends I have made money lost money and while doing all these uh, things i could not find exact answers to some of the questions uh, that I needed answers to, especially when I was feeling anxious. And um, people said, especially the healthcare providers, that I'm fine. And uh, this is where there is a big gap between what we are looking for when the NHS or the healthcare provider in your country is saying that you are fine, but you are growing through things like some versions of... Um, some version of... Um, uh, sleeplessness, stress, anxiety, and so forth. And uh, effectively, um, you need some help. One of the key things we discovered while we did these webinars and workshops, this is everywhere. We are all going through mental and emotional situations these days. It has increased during COVID. The awareness has increased. Uh, but we still have that stigma. We still have that hesitation in talking. So in this call, we are going to talk a little more. We are going to make it a point where we can talk about it using things that we can understand. And uh, they're simple enough. There is no jargon. And there is, um, uh, there is some kind of step which work. I have two KPIs, I say. One is it should be simple. And the second one is it should work. If it is not simple, then we won't be able to implement it on a day-to-day -day life. And if it doesn't work, how can we implement it? How can we benefit out of it? And many of us are going to hundreds of YouTube channels. They, we are watching that, trying to figure things out. But we need to find something which works quickly enough. So let's, let's listen to those things. Um, I'm just going through some of the questions I have. Uh, I've printed them out. As you know, these questions are extremely anonymous. So the way I will answer it would be uh, in a way that it does not reveal who has asked the question. Sometimes people from the same company are listening into this call. 
and they still don't uh, know where, who asked the question. And the reason I have made that happen is you need to feel safe, feel free in asking this question, at least on this call. Of course, there are other calls where you can definitely share things even more vocally in public, and we do have group workshops. Four in five small business owners tell that they are experiencing poor mental health. This is a study by IVOCA and Mental Health UK. You can find it on Google. And this also uh, refers to uh, even leaders as well. And with uh, business leaders, who it's not their own business to start with, but um, there's a 60% uh, chance of 60% occurrence of uh, mental health issues, uh, starting from mild anxiety. And these are some of the stats that we see in all the uh, webinars, and I have given the source at the bottom. But some of the stats are pretty interesting as well as scary, but we do see a positive impact as well. One or two stats I will focus on. One is 90% of people who take time off with stress or anxiety, they never cite that that is the reason for that absence. And it's very logical, and even uh, if you look at our own lives, do we really say that I'm not feeling well when we call in sick at work? I mean, we just say that, okay, I got a flu or something happened with my family or something. You don't say I'm feeling anxious, even if you are. And that leads to suboptimal uh, presentism. That leads to your loss of time and uh, money and the company's loss of time and money. But at, at the very core, you need somebody to speak with at that time. And uh, many a times just having a day off doesn't help as well. Three in four organizations tell that early interventions are the most effective. This is really true. Uh, it's a myth that uh, well-being is something that people cannot uh, do much about. And uh, whatever the movies show you, uh, things are really crazy. Movies actually try to show things or, or, or whatever you see on Netflix, show things to keep your attention. They show the craziest of things. But even uh, as a simple uh, parent dropping their child at school might be going through general anxiety, which can be avoided with just nice talk with friends and family or support group and so forth Become it before it becomes uh, more and more serious. Um, and we will we have a slide coming, but these mild things, when they are repeated again and again, it's like living with a mild flu. It does not help. And uh, speaking of that, we did talk about this negative compound effect in the previous uh, discussions. Mild things, when done again and again, have a compounding negative effect. It's exactly like the positive compounding effect where you do if you start saving $5 when you're young, by the time you are, uh, let's say, in your mid-30s, 40s, or 50s, you could cross very high numbers. That's the example that is given on compounding. Same thing is helpful for good habits. If you, have, uh, if you go to the gym every day, even for 10 minutes, they compound. They give you a very big benefit uh, over a period of time. The same is true for the negative side of things as well. Few errors in judgment. You can see the source I got this nice graph from as well. Few errors in judgment repeated every day and things go haywire in the long run. So don't don't think that when things are mild, I pull up my socks and, and start doing it. Especially if you're a leader, especially if you're a parent, you are in charge of something in life and you think you can tough it out. Um, no, let's 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 start talking. Maybe it is really mild, and and having a quick talk might just make it milder, and you move on in life. And what what's better than that? But if you just leave it unaddressed, unprocessed, it goes into a vicious cycle, where we call it the gen, uh, anxiety distraction cycle. You feel anxious a tiny bit. It doesn't even categorize as anxiety to start with. It might be just some version of frustration. If you remember our emotions wheel, but uh, you didn't pro process it. You might um, uh, watch Netflix for a while or go eat something. And if there is substance abuse, go for a cigarette or a drink or something of that kind. I'm not saying they're good or bad, but it has just distracted you. We haven't processed it and it comes back again. 
and next time it comes back it's a bit worse and next time it comes back it's a bit worse so when do you speak about these topics when you think you're fine that's the time any time is fine maybe we are fine so that's good maybe we are not in which case we we will take some help on that you can see i've taken this uh, mental health condition uh, chart from one of the public uh, posts stage 1 we have mild symptoms some warning signs today i'm going to share some detailed warning signs in the physical uh, side of things emotional cognitive and behavioral side of things last time we lo just looked at the top level but we did get questions asking follow up uh, uh, a bit more detail saying what happens in that situation how do we know that it's not a physical thing and it's related to anxiety so i'm going to answer that question i'm looking at the list of questions i have but yeah these are the stages stage 1 mild symptoms stage 2 symptoms increase in frequency and severity and start interfering with activities um again it depends uh, on a variety of uh, situations but as simple as you open the fridge and you don't remember why you opened it could be a mild symptom of anxiety we need to check this out we have an assessment where we can see what version it is and beyond a point we have to take care of uh, uh, ourselves and seek medical advice um this is not medical advice this is generic advice but 80 to 90% of situations are generic and preventative hence we are talking about that Stage three and four is where we really need uh, medical advice. Symptoms worsen with relapsing and recurrence accompanied by serious disruption. Um, people stop coming to work. You, you love eating something and you stop eating. You don't get sleep. Uh, headaches come, uh, stummy issues, uh, emotional freak, uh, freak outs or burnouts. Those are the symptoms. And stage four is even beyond. Symptoms are very persistent and severe. And they jeopardize our life. So mild, mild, mild. Let's let's talk at this stage right away so that it gets prevented. Okay. Uh, please don't ignore these things. Uh, create your own groups in your company. We help uh, companies create coffee groups uh, and and support groups. Um, and uh, initially, people used to be anxious. How can I share about this topic uh, in public? Uh, but that particular book group becomes your helping group uh, that group understands what you're going through um, even if a company is running uh, in its own way people have opportunity loss bereavement worry about economy worry about health worry about their caring responsibilities so many things happen in life that may not have anything to do with your business or your company but they will affect your business or your company your salary or revenue depending on whether you're employed or own the business and so forth so keep talking these are the kinds of anxiety disorders that are there and the reason i have highlighted generalized anxiety there are two reasons here so before that i'm just going to read out the headings generalized anxiety separation anxiety agoraphobia which is fear of being in place places hard to escape social anxiety specific phobia someone is afraid of spiders or something and panic disorder now the reason we here focus on general anxiety the first one is that this is very preventative i mean if you, if you are in the early stages uh, we can talk about it and a huge amount of impact can be done uh, just by taking small steps before it deteriorates. And we use the quiz, GAD7 quiz, in order to understand what stage we are. Uh, it has very simple questions, uh, and you, you find it on most uh, medical websites as well as coaching websites. Now, the second reason why we focus on generalized anxiety is most healthcare organizations will say you're fine. You, why don't you uh, change your diet or go for a walk or ask a friend? And uh, 80 to 90 percent of patients uh, will be sent back saying everything is fine. I'd go to an online course on our website and everything will be fine. And uh, well, unfortunately, that's not true. I mean, they are saying the right thing because they have even worse situations to deal with, unfortunately. However, uh, 
this is where most healthcare organizations are really tied up and you are at the bottom of their priority list. So we talk about generalized anxiety in here. Okay. This is a repeat question, but in a very quick way, I will explain what's the difference between stress, burnout, anxiety, and depression. We use uh, one particular word to uh, switch between anxiety and depression, and it's helpful. Stress is body's response to something and body and mind's response to something external. Stress is not something bad. In fact, if we did not have stress, we won't work. If we didn't have stress, good things won't happen as well. Burnout is when you're running out of battery. When you have not taken care of things for so long, when everything is priority zero or priority one for so long, that you have not taken care of yourself, you have not put your own oxygen mask first before helping someone out or even doing your own stuff. And uh, I'll give you the physical symptoms in a minute. Anxiety now is crossing the line towards a version of fear. One of the key words about anxiety is avoidance. If I have a presentation coming tomorrow and I'm really scared about it and, and I've been practicing about it, my thinking would be, how can I avoid that? And uh, this is a time uh, I might catch a flu. Something might happen on the road uh, uh, and, and so forth. I mean, there are so many things that w people try to do creatively to get out of that situation. And if you're going through something similar, that's uh, some version of anxiety, uh, at least the mildest ones to start with, because it can it can go into even serious versions, uh, into panic and uh, uh, full-fledged uh, breakdown. Depression, on the other hand, is withdrawal and, and, uh, and hopelessness or helplessness, I would say. Uh, a sad version of anger, uh, in a way, in, in common man's way. Um, meaning, I do have a presentation tomorrow morning, but whether I prepare for it or I don't prepare for it, who cares? We'll see. And, uh, and many a times, depression can involve uh, some creative things, uh, not so helpful like watching Netflix for really long and waiting for the last minute to prepare or just uh, giving up and just going to sleep or, or doing something else. So that is the common man's version of uh, splitting these um, uh, terminologies. Now, the physical, behavioral, emotional and cognitive side of things over here, I've listed down feeling tense, nervous, unable to relax. I was with um, uh, in a workshop where uh, the person mentioned that if someone asks me to relax, I get more stressed. If you tell me to keep relaxing, I keep getting more and more stressed. And uh, those are physical symptoms that there is some uh, version of fear that you want to talk it out at this stage. Uh, it, and it has started uh, coming, uh, uh, started being expressed uh, physically. Uh, you feel headaches, body pains that are not going away unless you take a painkiller or unless you sleep for too long or rest for too long. Sweating, uh, pins and needles uh, in various places uh, as you are sitting down and, and in your hands and, and extremities. Faster breathing, and, and I should have written here, but for those who are uh, taking notes, you can also put slower breathing because... A change in normal pace is something that definitely the faster is more common, I would say. It goes towards uh, uh, anxiety and panic. But whatever is happening, if you do the opposite of it, you come back. And we, we teach that in the green zone, red zone, uh, yellow zone. If your breathing is becoming faster, just slow down to your version of normalcy. And if your breathing has become so slow that you have not even noticed that you are breathing very shallow, then just take some deeper breaths and bring back to one, two, three, four speed, which I mean count from one to four while breathing in and count from one to four while breathing out. And do it at your own version of normalcy, uh, whatever feels right to you. Okay. Um, some other physical ch changes that happen when stress and anxiety are there. And if you see someone who loves uh, eating specific things, but now is not eating at all. Change in food habits, or eating too many, too too much of. Uh, I mean, like they show in movies. I mean, eating too much chocolate or ice cream and so forth. Well, it's not just chocolate or ice cream. It could be something that you think is healthy, 
um, but you're 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 actually using that as a coping mechanism to not think about that particular uh, stage um it helps you get engaged uh, in 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 some activity of eating uh, and and takes you to a different mood uh, but uh, yeah any change in food habits is is a sign that you need to just come back to your version of normalcy and that might be leading towards anxiety or depression toilet frequency this is uh, again coming from real life experience uh, i've speak uh, spoken and met and have had my own experience as well many a times you feel like going to the toilet more often and uh, and spend more time over there uh, this is uh, also related to the fact that your digestion gets uh, affected uh, things which were easily digested uh, are taking time uh, you feel a sense of bloating or uh, regurgitation or vomiting and uh, anything that relates to that and digestion is affected by our thinking our pat patterns of processing our emotions and if our emotions are not fully processed it just shows up in your in your uh, tummy health change in sex drive is a big thing uh, both uh, up, uh, uh, when it increases or reduces so you can see something similar to changing uh, the breathing patterns as well um, many a times it could be used uh, as a coping mechanism to get over things or not think about things or many a times we become so distant because we are, our mind is so engrossed in thinking something else and we don't feel uh, like picking ourselves up um you can see that i'm not using any uh, examples of chemicals that are released and and so forth the main reason i remembered chemicals is because of the dry mouth and uh, we did talk about stomach issues but there is an actual phys chemical reaction happening that is uh, cre creating uh, the dry mouth and stomach issues as well um on purpose i don't want to go into that part because you can find these things uh, a lot uh, when you google it uh, many a times we use uh, these uh, terminologies and googling around to just uh, remember the um, anxiety distraction cycle we're distracting ourselves from the anx anx anxious things uh, by going and doing some research and trying to become our own psychologist but yeah if you're feeling dry mouth and you have been having water and uh, stomach issues are coming pounding heart i have mentioned that that's a very common symptom please 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 talk to somebody take help uh, uh, reach out to someone uh, wherever possible you can contact us and uh, uh, depending on the situation we can definitely uh, help in the general anxiety uh, stage but these are the physical symptoms uh, that are uh, i mean taken for granted don't take these for granted okay um behavioral symptoms you have a great friend and now he or she is avoiding you social distress uh, you used to be comfortable in certain situations uh, you know, for example in a wedding and now you serious the moment you think about a wedding it's not helping you out and you feel sweating you know uh, uh, when when this is happening it all comes together i'll go back to this slide these things physical behavioral emotional and cognitive they are working together okay so it's not that uh, they are they are like a formula and you see one of them and you can diagnose they are all working together you can see sleep sleeplessness sleeplessness is a behavioral, behavioral symptom restlessness is a behavioral symptom but they are of course physical we talked about substance abuse whether it is ice cream or a cigarette or anything else and uh, that is definitely uh, a behavior change uh, that happens and people think they can get out of it repeated memories this is where rumination comes in you know you keep thinking how somebody let you down again and again and again even if it's not helping you keep thinking and it's unfortunate and sometimes it's involuntary as well and uh, there is a term if i remember it's called ant automatic negative thoughts um, in our workshops, we change all the negative thoughts to protective thoughts because these emotions are coming to protect us, to help us do something about things. But yeah, the repetition really increases uh, in this situation.
emotional uh, changes happy person going very silent drastic changes changes in approach to feelings and emotions you used to care for something and now you don't uh, easily distracted we talked about rumination during sleeplessness you might have either very great dreams or huge nightmares and it is some version of anxiety and uh, effectively uh, we got to talk at this time we got to start addressing these things uh, feeling blank is something that really uh, comes in as well you are following a chain of thought and you don't know what's next and the last one is cognitive cognition refers to recognition uh, how you perceive a situation uh, we have workshops where we talk about uh, um, biases our filters our glasses we become indecisive even for a simple decision shall i make a cup of coffee or not and you take ages to decide about it your attention goes everywhere forgetfulness communication issues i mean both on the positive side and not so positive side as well and these are the uh, cognitive things that are really hinting that we need to take care of our mental health so instead of waiting until it is uh, really late if you start looking for overwhelm burnout emotional breakdown all sorts of worries it can be related to economy money bereavement relationship and so forth it's some version of uncertainty contact us for a small dis uh, discussion simple discussion and contact a friend contact a support system uh contact someone at at your workplace if your workplace does not have an employee policy about whom to contact in such situation uh have one in place ask them to get one in place uh, many many companies have us listed in their um employee handbook and uh, we do go through our uh, system where we ask a couple of questions before uh deciding whether we are right for that discussion or not because certain cases are much more urgent uh, but uh, 80 to 90% of situations are really not urgent you are not alone don't think of, that you cannot discuss these topics uh, will you be judged you won't be and um, send keep sending the anonymous questions and we'll keep answering these questions because the more we talk becomes a diminishing problem so yeah you have a qr code above to understand how we work for uh, companies look out for overwhelm burnout emotional breakdown any sort of worry book a discovery call have a coffee morning with us or just within yourselves uh, and uh, a bunch of things are available for free this does not really cost much what it costs is to get up and take a small action of talking to someone and uh, if you can't find anyone safe uh, to talk with we are here to start a conversation so thanks for taking the time for listening um looking at the questions uh, the way i organized it it's it's a bit tough to answer specific question trying to keep things anonymous but uh, i'm just going through the list and yes we did answer all of them uh, to the extent possible you can always ask follow up questions go and look at past recordings if you haven't subscribed please subscribe share this video with others and remember the first person to take care is you yourself and you are not alone so talk safely with mindly talk safely with a friend and keep talking on this topic thank you for listening